is up guys it's your dude jam jam here just uh i was wondering this is kind of weird i noticed that there's this mountain that is off to the side over here um and there's been a huge crane that's been like up on top and it looks like there's a structure so anyways i don't know what this is i think it might be someone's new house but it when i'm driving out of my neighborhood it's like this giant I say it's a giant eyesore, but I mean, there's tons of houses around here. But anyways, I was gonna fly my drone real quick and take a quick look at uh, what's going on with it. So check it out. Alright, so yeah, it looks like it's some sort of a house. It looks like maybe a two-story still structured house. Pretty crazy though. Uh, that's going up right now. Um, anyways, let's see. Today is Thursday. It's been kind of a mixed week. Uh, it's gone really quick. I don't even know. Um, so a little bit more update after my rights and run. Yeah, I'm really glad I stopped my rights and run when I did, I think. Um, went out Monday night and did a really aggressive four laps on North Mountain. I was basically sprinting just up and down it, going really hard on the downs. A little bit of a sore hip on Tuesday, so I took that day off. Did the group run last night, and then I'm about to go back out and do some more on North Mountain now. But, um, yeah, I don't know. that My quads, even last night, were still kind of fried, I think, from the weekend. So I think it's a good thing that I... Uh, that I pulled the plug on that. I think it would have taken too much out of me. Um, and I know a lot of you guys in the comments are saying the same thing. I think it's smart. Something that's kind of cool is I'm heading to Auburn area this weekend. I'm actually filming for Solomon out at the Way Too Cool 50K. So I've never been to or done that race. Obviously, I've been out on the Western States course if you guys have been watching this channel for some time. Uh, so it'd be fun to get back out there. It's supposed to be raining and s possibly snowing. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my camera gear. I've, most of the stuff I have isn't, isn't kosher in the rain, so I gotta figure this out and try and figure out how I'm gonna film uh, all of this experience and what's going down with it. So I'm um, gonna take you guys along for that journey and that ride, it'll be pretty fun. Um, anyways, I'm gonna hit a run right now. Um, it's like 12 in the afternoon, so I'm gonna get that going and uh, later on be packing for this trip. Should be a good time. I'm going to probably try and do about 3,000 feet of vert right now. I might get some more in later, not really sure. But uh, this week isn't uh, turning out to be as much as I had hoped, uh, especially with this trip up to Northern California. It's going to be that whole 36-hour trip is going to take uh, definitely some time out of my day, but it's an opportunity I didn't want to turn down. All right, I'm out here. I'm going up North Mountain from the south side off of Central Avenue. You can see the road right there. Runs all the way to downtown Phoenix. So if you're ever in Phoenix and you want a really steep climb on a single track trail, find Central Ave from downtown, drive north all the way until you dead end into a mountain. And I guess I'll show you when I end the run how to access it, but there's, there's a little access point off of this uh, near this gated community where there's a, the preserve actually goes over the road. There's a tunnel through it, which is pretty cool. But right at that tunnel, that's where you find this trail and it is extremely steep. So highly recommended. It's about 750 feet of gain in under a mile. And the views are pretty good, I'd have to say. For being in the middle of a big damn city, not too shabby. Uh, so what does one take on a, a typical training run? Well, I'll show you my kit real quick. Show the heck of it. Start from the top, got the uh, better than the trail hat. Got some Rudy Project sunglasses. The Su Solomon Sense Ultra Set 8 pack. And in here, I've got a couple goodies. Just uh, a goo, and happy birthday goo, 25th anniversary today. And then these, these we got these for free, these Gatorade Endurance shoes. We've got one water bottle, the GoPro. Uh, on the wrist, I've got the uh, Sunto Ambit 3 Peak. 
And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later because as I've been on my runs recently, haven't been too happy with the way my watch has been set up. It's been like this for a while. I don't think I even really updated it, but I'll go over it when I'm done with my run. I'll show you my current screens, why I'm always switching between the different screens and why it doesn't really have the information I'm wanting. I have to check my phone for like added information and that just seems silly. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna update my watch settings today. I'm gonna show you guys what that process is like, because you can't just do it internally from the watch. I'm fairly certain. So it requires you to plug it into a computer, I think. And I'll show you what my current settings are going to be. And we'll talk about that. Oh, and I almost forgot to talk about the shoes. So still running in these upcoming pair for release of the Ultra Pro. That is what mine look like currently with a ton of miles on them. I still feel good. Really, really digging the shoe. Excited for the world to get them. It's based upon a shoe designed for Francois Den. And they just released some special model of them. Only 171 available, one for each kilometer of his record setting UTMB run. It's called the S Lab Ultra. And the Ultra Pro is the non S Lab version of that. So, pretty sweet. We're making our way up. 500 feet of climb down. That's our goal, those towers up there, that's the top of north. So here we are, top of Central. This is that tunnel. So if you see the tunnel, right there is the trail. It goes right up. So yeah, hit me up if you do this trail. It's super fun. I just got in 1,500 feet of climb. I gotta head to the office, so I'm gonna call that a run for right now. Tweaked my ankle a little bit on filming one of those clips. I was really dumb, but it happens. And uh, took it nice and chill, felt pretty good. All right guys, this is actually the next day. I was trying to do this yesterday, and of course, Moves Count website was not working, so um, thanks for bearing with me here. But I'm going to be showing you guys what my current watch settings are, and I'm gonna go in and show you the process of how to update the screens while you're actually in your run. So um, here is the Sunto Ambit 3 Peak. This is the watch that I've been using for quite some time now. And I'm just going to go ahead and take it off my wrist real quick. Uh, this has been a pretty reliable watch overall. Really dig this thing. Um, but I, I wanted to update the screens because they're not exactly what I was hoping to see when I'm out there running. So let's go ahead and take a look currently what my screens are. So at the top I have my, my pace. That's right here. It's showing I'm going 19 miles an hour. Just sitting in the office here. Uh, my distance is in the center at the main one, and the bottom is the time. So if I want to see any of my distance data, I have to go to this screen right here. Now if I select over one, I can see my total distance and my time. So it's basically the same thing except no pace. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a redundant screen with actually less information. And my final screen is my total ascent at the top, my altitude in the middle, and my heart rate beats per minute at the bottom. I don't even run with a heart rate monitor. Why is this on here? I couldn't tell you why, it was just the standard setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up to my computer now. Um, I've got my Sunto charging cable and that will actually go on, it just goes on right here. If you guys have a Sunto watch, you know. So these little teeth just line up right there 
And once you are set, you'll see uh, first off that it is charging here on the bottom. And then next up is on my computer screen here. Should connect to Moves Link over here. And also it should connect on to the Sunto website. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, so now I'm back into my screen here and I've just connected in. And now I can see over here on my screen that Ambit 3 Peak is connected. It's downloading data from the device. So it's probably gonna sync the run that I just made right there. You can go check that out on Strava. Should be zero miles. So I'm gonna go, go over here to my watches. And so I actually have a couple of these watches, but I'm gonna to go to the Sunto Ambit 3 Peak, Peak that just synced 20 seconds ago. So if I scroll down from my main page and I find my different modes, I'm gonna to go to my running mode because that's the one that I use most often. If you go down, go to running and click edit over here. You can have up to eight displays it looks like. And so I'm going to start out here on the first one. You can go all kinds of different screens here. Now I've opened up this first one here and I'm gonna start out. I'm trying to think what would be the best. I think you can select up to five items for one screen. So we're gonna try and see how much information we can fit. I for sure wanna know my the amount of feet I've climbed. It would be great to know my distance, my total time, maybe even time of day, and maybe even elevation. I think those five things would be awesome to have on one screen. Let's start out with a scent, I like that one. Next up, total altitude would be very cool. And let's see this bottom one here. We don't want heart rate. I don't think that that was very helpful. So let's go ahead and do distance. Okay. And this says five views here. Let's see what other options we can do here. It looks like we can do a graph of our chart of our day. That's kind of cool. And let's say that we want, it just shows your altitude. I guess that's the only option on that one. We'll just keep that one as is. So I currently have one screen that at the very top is my altitude. In the middle is my ascent. That is something that I've been tracking a lot for Barkley. So right now I think I want to keep that on altitude as, or ascent as being my main number. And then distance at the bottom. I think at a quick glance, I can see where I'm at elevation wise. So I can see maybe how far I am from the next peak. Then I can also see how much I've climbed and I can see my total distance. That's not something that I had on a screen before. I always had to click between them. So I think that's really good. And if I go to my next screen over, I think pace at the top is perfect. And then having distance in the middle, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then I think on the bottom, my chrono, so my total time would be awesome. I think it would also be good to have my, my time of day on there as well. And I don't know if that, maybe there's a way you can scroll through different settings on there. I thought there was a way to have four on one, but I might be, I might be wrong. So I'm gonna just have those uh, two on that screen. So we'll give that a, a try. Uh, let's see my other settings real quick. I've currently got my recording interval on one second. I want the most accuracy possible and I've also got it on the best GPS accuracy. So it says 20 hour battery life, which I felt like is okay. Um, Alti Barrow profile. Let's see here. Alti profile when your outdoor activity involves changes in altitude. Select Barrow when your outdoor actually does not. Oh yeah, we definitely do uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, altitude in our training. And I think that's about it. Um, I think I'm just going to save that. So we should be able to send these new settings to the watch. So let's see if I need to do anything else in order for it to update to the device. I've saved my route there. Now I don't ever alpine ski or cycle or indoor train or mountaineer, open water swim. I can just take all these off. Trekking, no. Run a route. Hmm. Don't really do that, but triathlon, I don't do that. So I've kind of just updated it. So I just click over and running. That's my only option now. I've just uh, fixed that. So uh, I think that's about it. Let me see if there's anything else I need to do in order to save and send these settings to my watch. Okay, so in order to have these settings take place, I need to resync my Sunto. So let's do that right now. 
We're gonna reconnect the device real quick here. It should be connected, okay. Now it is says it's downloading data, so it should be connected back into Moves Link right now. And now it's synchronizing the settings, so these new watch settings should be taking into effect. You may now remove your device. Okay, so let's remove the device, and now let's go ahead and uh, see if we can start a new run now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do an exercise. It's again searching for my GPS. Okay, so here we go. Um, now at the top of the first screen, it's showing my altitude. We're at 1,276 feet. We've got some major altitude here, guys, in Phoenix. Ascent is the big one in the middle now, and my distance is at the bottom, so that's really cool. I can now see my ascent and my distance in one screen. Now if I scroll over to the next screen, I will see at the top is my pace, middle is my distance, and bottom is the time, the actual stopwatch time. And then my third one is an ascent graph. So it shows my current altitude. It shows, I guess, my chart of my altitude gain. It looks like a chrono at the bottom. So if I click the left button over here, I can scroll between time of day and I can scroll between my chrono. So that might be something to think about on the first screen. I might add in my, maybe my distance and my chrono would be something really nice to have on that first screen. So I might, I might update that, but um, anyways guys, that was the process of updating your Suunto display settings for your watch. So you can't do it within the watch screen, unfortunately, but once you kind of figure out and learn the system, it's not too bad. So you can just make sure you connect your, your Suunto cable to over to the moves link and then go into moves count and you can update all your settings. So uh, I will give you guys a little teaser. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this type of video where I'm showing you my settings and what I'm doing, uh, please leave a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, I'd love to talk more about the actual gear I put into practice. Don't know if I'm going to be doing exact gear reviews, but you know, I'd love showing you what works for me. I know it can sometimes help. Um, but I will give you guys a quick teaser because I did get a new watch recently. I haven't opened it yet because I want to make a video about it, but it is right here and it is the Suunto Spartan Ultra. And so I'm going to save this for another time. I'm not actually going to open it right now. Sorry. I'm going to do that in a separate video, but I'm super excited to give this watch a try. Full disclaimer, Suunto did send me this watch free of charge. so. Um, take that for what it's worth, but I'm excited to give this one a try. Uh, I've overall had really good luck with the Ambit 3 Peak, and um, this one is going to be really fun. So stay tuned for an upcoming video on that. Uh, other than that, uh, I guess I'll leave this video off with, I am about to board a plane here in just two hours. i got to get out of here, actually. For uh, Sacramento, I'm going to be at the Way Too Cool 50K going to be filming for Solomon, so hanging out with a bunch of their athletes. It's going to be a quick turnaround trip, but I'm going to be out there filming the race, filming the athletes, and I'm going to be doing, hopefully, a little behind the scenes of that whole process. Super excited to be heading up there and checking out the scene. I've never run that race before. Um, so anyways, guys, thank you again for checking out this episode of The Steep Life. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that next video, and Jam Jam signing out.